Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show, and today we are reviewing John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. Jay, why are we reviewing a movie that's 37 years old? Well, it's not just any movie, it, in my opinion. I don't know yeah. about Bob, but in my opinion, this is the best science fiction horror movie of all time. It's, mm. It is my favorite horror movie. It's my favorite thriller, and it's my favorite monster movie. Mm -hmm. Your favorite, top one, not even, what about Aliens? Aliens is a fine film. I loved it. Aliens is great. It is great. I'm not sure it, I could choose between the two. I say they're both top 10 classics. Sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. I mean, putting them in the top 10 is easy. I'm, I am daring to say that this is one of the, yeah. it's the best. It's the best horror movie of all time. What do you think, Bob? I, I wouldn't put it. I don't think in my number one spot. Well, what would, this what's like in a your number one like spot? Oh, Jetta. You're going to ask me that question I, right now? You cannot. <laughs> um, I can't answer that question. But it's, <laughs> it's in like top, top five, top ten. It's, it's a classic. It is a classic that holds up for so, many, and for so many reasons. But what really surprises me doing some of this research is that this movie did shit when, yeah. it, when mm -hmm. it came out in 82. It, it cost $15 million to make. It made $20 million. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bomb. But it's not a really, really popular movie. They weren't like jumping up and down. Hey, we got $20 million. The reviews were horrible. Yeah. Horrible. That's really surprising. Because right? I remember at the time, we loved it, right? So oh, yes. Because we, we If there were taste. Rotten Tomatoes in 1982, it would have been like, you know how the critics, like, crit critics give it 15 and the, the viewers give it right. 90. What were the it would have been one thinking? of those disconnects. I never understood why that movie didn't... It's didn't get any props at all. What's well, up with that? Well, here's, here's, let's go over a little bit what they said. Uh, let's see. Roger Ebert said, disappointing. He, he referred to it as a barf bag movie. Yeah. Um, Starlog said, Starlog, remember Starlog magazine? Sure. They said, this movie smells. It smells really bad. What? Right. Cine Fantastique, which was a fantastic, like, high-end uh, genre mm -hmm. magazine in the day. Um, they said, they, they did a cover story. It's like, is this the most hated movie of all time? They actually, they actually did that. Um, so the reviews were... Let's see. Oh yes, uh, Washington Post said it was a wretched excess. I mean, it was. I think it was a little bit. It was ahead of its time in, in a lot of ways. But there are other reasons because you got to think back at the summer of '82. Right. This was a this was a blockbuster genre season or or year. There was a lot of great stuff that that came out. So you had Rathacon, Star mm -hmm. Trek, Star mm -hmm. Trek Two. You had arguably Thunder. the best Trek movie. Yep, of the absolutely. Series. You had uh, so you had Rathacon. You had Tron. Mm -hmm. You had Poltergeist. And most importantly, you had E.T. Now, mm -hmm. E.T. was released two weeks before this. Two weeks. So the world, the world was in love with, with E.T. It was cuddly. It was family-oriented. Yeah, yeah, that. So, and then you have this movie. E.T. doesn't really hold up very it, well. No, it's, it's nigh unwatchable. <laughs> I, I, saw, I saw it 15 years ago. My daughter, like, yeah, we're going to see E.T. Like, what happened? Nothing's happening. It happened. Something happened. Nothing happened. So, but this movie totally holds up. Um, now you lost my I lost my train of thought. Where was I? What was I? We're saying? talking about the reviews. Why are the Why are the reviews so terrible? Um, well, I think you made. But, the, that's the point, Bob. That but it was in, it wasn't in the zeitgeist, Jay. It, you know, if it came out six or seven months later, it, it could have done. Sure. It, it, it could have done better. People were feeling cuddly. You know, like the the world was absorbing E.T. for the first time. Right. That, makes, that could have been so, it all by itself. And it sounds like from the reviews, a big part of it was that this was it was pushing the envelope of gore. Of sci-fi, you know, you had right. dog parts coming out of the guy's stomach. It was fantastic. We loved it. The head coming off and crawling away like oh a spider. Oh, my God. Amazing. You know, that, it was amazing. But, you know, that was, I think, a little bit too much for the average reviewer. It's, and they, they, they thought that that was gratuitous. Right. But it wasn't gratuitous. Uh, it wasn't gratuitous at all. It I mean, wasn't gratuitous I mean, look at all. all the things that the movie did right. And for a movie to be this good, they pretty much had to do everything right. I don't have a critique for the film. I don't mm. have any negative thing to say about it. The pacing is, is exquisite. I have, yeah, just it's some a, niggling things about Just a the, couple things. Some, some of the actors, like some of the characters, they establish that they're clever, they're smart, they, got, they know what's going on, and then they make a couple of stupid choices. It's like, uh... Why would you do oh, that at that Steve, point? But Steve, that comment doesn't fly with me because I hear you. Because I'm just that's the when only you thing. do anything horror, you, the intelligence of everyone <laughs> in every horror movie drops significantly. But. Let me finish. 
This movie, <laughs> this movie had the most intelligent cast of people. They were making. This is why the movie was so frightening. Yes. They were making good decisions. They were making good decisions as things were unfolding. Yes. These weren't right. great decisions. They weren't great, but you got to think these guys were underslept, yeah. underfed, totally yeah, freaked that's out. True. That's I mean, right. But the classic mistake for me, the one that's almost unforgivable, is when they came up with this wonderful idea that that this, you know, how do you tell? This is the, the one of the classic problems of yep. this of this movie. <clears throat> how do you tell? That somebody is a perfect replica, they might not even know that they're a replica. How do you how do you really tell? So who was it? Was it McCready who said that uh, when he when he saw the head breaking away in that classic scene? He's like each little piece of this thing wants to survive. So he comes up with a heated little wire yeah. and he puts it in the blood and then it comes out right. Oh, that was one <laughs> so of the best fantastic. Scenes. So all right. Inspired genius. Yeah. Now they know they know definitively who is mm -hmm. taken over. Well, I mean. It's not 100%, because if you're only a little bit taked over, t taken over... Well, you could have been affected, but not taken right. over. Right, So, but yeah. they knew. They knew who was who. Yeah. So at that point, that's when you were like, nobody leaves my sight. Nobody... And then right. they split up. That, to me, that's well, the classic that, wait, mistake, wait, wait, wait. but you kind of needed yeah, that stuff to happen. Yeah, they kind of unnecessarily split up. They, yeah, point. when they went down into the basement, when the boiler is, where the generator was, right. they did split up. You know, I, I really don't know... That doesn't make any sense, and I agree. Like, they could have had the attack be a little more... Um, O, you know, overt. They could have forced them to split up for some unexpected reason, yeah. but whatever. This again, that's like we're, we're but that is literally we're nitpicking. That's them. a joke because well, every, everything. We can talk about all the things that worked from phenomenally well. Yeah. So you know, like the for the horror genre, you need to be in an isolated location, yeah. right? And it needs to be over a short period of time. And if you can't get out, that's all, that's a bonus. So this had it was a yeah. beautiful mix. You have an Antarctic station, so they're isolated. They're snowed in. They're snowed in, and you know, it, this is all taking place over a very short period of time. Yep. They maximized use of the unknown. I mean, this is based on the book Who Goes There. The idea Campbell, is you don't, Campbell, yeah, yeah. you don't know who the enemy is. It could be anybody. You could be the enemy. Like, how, how you know, uh, more terrifying does it get than that? And again, you're right. The, the breakthrough for this movie, and remember, we talked about this coming out of the theater. Yeah. The breakthrough was this is the first real major horror movie where the characters did did the right things most of yep. the time. They were yeah. blithering idiots. You sometimes they, were, they were smarter than we were sometimes. You know, yep. like they did things like that's a clever idea. I, yeah. mean, I didn't even think of that. So they they because I think horror movies lazily advance the plot by having characters do stupid yeah, things. Yeah, the classic thing is... Yeah, Jay, I know you love uh, them. I'm going to go take a shower. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to go off by myself yeah. and... You know, it's like, don't they know they're in a horror movie? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, but these guys, so like, you know, when you follow the thread of what's going on, you know, the music comes in yeah. in the beginning, the, the helicopter. Music is amazing. Uh, the music The music yeah. sets the tone yeah. and, and it rides it the whole time. And Carpenter did that, not write that music. Typically, he did the music for his yeah. movie. That's true. He did not, he did not write it. It was movie. classic. So, you know, when the dog comes in, like right away, the tension is up because two people get killed trying to, to kill the dog and nothing makes sense. Like what were they doing? What yeah. were they trying to kill the dog for? And everything, all we know is that dog, there's something wrong with the dog. That dog ain't right. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's it, you know that dog's not right. And I agree, so the tension was ratcheted up right from the opening yep. scene. The right. mystery was ratcheted up and they established those characters so well, so efficiently you like felt connected to yeah. all of all of this, in, you know, ensemble cast of characters right. very quickly. Yeah. And it also, it was, some of their reviews were saying that they were like cardboard characters that existed only to be like cut down. Like, are you? Did you even what? watch this movie? No. They just, well, I loved all of them. Yeah. They were just saying just just wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. child. I mean, once they creating, decided, love these guys. Once they decided to not like the film, they were just doing yeah, the they were just inventing stuff. negative stuff. Uh, you know, say. the real deal is that those characters felt lived in. They felt like they belonged yes. there. They felt like they knew each. Each other like some of them had beefs with each other like yeah. you know usually you know it's hard to establish that you could be like character a and character b yeah. don't like each other but they played it where you really felt it right like if you have an old couple you know like if you're playing you're know, writing and playing an old couple they have to have the old couple like all the little inside things and annoyances yeah. and nuances that you build up over 50 years these guys weren't that you know intimate but they were they were living together in a station for long enough that they were already on each other's nerves yeah, they knew right. Each other's quirks. Definitely not you know, day one for them. In, uh, you know, I was no, wondering no. when El Capitan was going to get to use his pop gun. Yeah. <laughs> so right there, they established two yes. characters with one line.
line. Yeah. You know that that guy's you no know, fish is kind of a jerk, you know, and then yeah. this guy is a is a loser. Oh my god. You know, pothead, right? Yeah. I mean, like yeah. right there, like they just were so efficient in establishing these characters, um, and then they, you know, the, these characters that we we get invested in very quickly. We know something dangerous is happening. We, there's but we're trying to figure it out as we go along, and the shit hits the fan really fast. Yeah. And of course. You know, another expert thing about the crafting of this movie is knowing just when to throw in enough humor. Yeah. To, oh yes. You know, to, to give you a roller coaster ride, the, the the classic line. Of, epic line. Epic. I don't know what, what it, it is, is, but, but it's, it's weird, weird and pissed yeah. off. I was going to say oh that. Oh my god. It's I mean, funny, but at the same time, think about what we just saw. Oof. Right. So Steve, you're right. There is that little relief. Yes. But they they were run screaming because you know they, they yeah. hit the fire alarm. They all run. The, uh, the character's name that was taking care of the dogs was Clark, right? Yeah, yeah Clark. So Clark is like, he got a glimpse of something's freaked out. Something's going yeah. on in there. You know, the dogs were going ape shit. Then McCready comes in and starts mercy killing the dogs that were being like right. absorbed. Right, yeah. They didn't know what it was. And then like when they put the fire out, like they set it on fire, 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 they put it on fire. And then they put it out. And then like there's this pause. Like you get to absorb yeah. their shock and awe yeah. of that scene, and you can, it's almost like you know the the, the dust from the uh, the, uh, the fire extinguishers is yeah. settling, and they're just and, and the reality of what's going on is settling in on the characters. It's such an ex exquisite scene. It was great. Then then and it, what else yeah. is funny about that line is that that he described every monster in every monster movie. Yeah. Right. It's like it was such a meta <laughs> line. You know, it's like it's, every monster is something. It's weird and pissed off. That yeah. like describes just yeah. a generic and, description. And at that time, that character was the was infected. Yeah, no, we don't right? know about Clark. It, it wasn't. Uh, no, he. he here we go. Wait, here wait, we go. Is he the one? This is Bob. We got to be sure? careful because this could be a lot of talk. No, the first guy. No, I know the it. The first guy was okay. the pothead. Yes. The guy. The, the, that's the guy that said, you've got to be fucking kidding yes. me. Yes. Yeah. He, there, that's there's right. one scene where the dog walks into the room and you see a shadow of someone yes. turn around and it was him. It was him. Right. It was him. So he yeah. got hit first. Right. Now, we, okay, so his line where he where he had that great line where he's, where he's like, he sees like the head, right? The head yeah, drip down in the leg. To, and he kidding me. And this yeah. guy knew exactly what it was. Or, or maybe, see, that's one of the things that I love about this movie. You're maybe not, he didn't. You're not 100% sure. He, we know he was infected, yeah. but maybe he didn't even know that he was infected. Yet, you know? He sort of knew. I think he could. He obviously had the memories and personality of the character he was being, and maybe he could just let that character ride. But he clearly knew because, like, when he was sitting on the couch and he was going to be tested, he knew he was going to be exposed. You could tell. Like, like, you, at, but you at that point, I, I think I think there's, you'd get there's a critical threshold where yeah. where where you you're like, whoa, okay, I'm the I'm the thing now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Right? I don't know about that. No, I don't think it works that way. I think I think it 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 takes you over, right? Yeah. And I think it it. It's a meat puppet at that point, yeah, but it depends how you're infected. I think now we remember it was the uh, the doctor, uh, the guy who had a heart attack. Yeah. yeah, he he. The theory was that he got infected by the food by the food or something. Yeah. He, yeah. So he, for him, it could have been a slow process. And yeah, but he wasn't the thing yet. He was just dying. And then once he died, then you remake. You know, the thing remakes you. Then you are a hundred percent the thing. Yeah. But what's interesting is that we're still debating right. 37 years exactly. later. Exactly. That's, that's, that, that's what I love it's about it. It's super yeah. interesting. And so Clark was never the thing, by the right. way. They yep. tested his corpse. Which yeah. makes you Which a murderer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so many quotable lines. I mean, the movie is such a gem. You know, Carpenter yeah. lucked out a little bit because they they had he had a delay. There was a year delay of principal, principal mm -hmm. photography. So he had a whole year, and he really thought about it. He It really allowed him to have like nuanced kind of plotting and yeah. funky things happening. You could... You could determine who was infected by watching what they wear. Because when you're infected, when you're when you you're, when you're taking, you rip out of your you rip out of your clothes and where they burn up or something, and, you, they, you, and it's evidence. So so you, if you track what people are wearing, you could say he's probably infected. This is the scene. Where yeah, because his clothes. Because his clothes. Yeah. His clothes. Because a lot of these characters were wearing the same clothes. Yeah. So you, could, you could track that. But a lot of mis mysterious things like the shadows. You're not sure who's who is that. The keys and yeah. all these things that are happening that we're still debating. You know, it's still mm -hmm. here's a theory. Here's a theory that I just found out today that blew me away. What? Blew me away. Okay, so you've Hit got me. you've got McCready yep. and you got Childs at the end, right? Mm -hmm. the, the camp is on, on fire, fire, on yeah. fire, and you, and McCready sits down. He's got he's got the uh, he's got the bottle of liquor with him, and he's just like you know, wait like, for let, the end. Let's man. just just wait. Just gonna let's just wait yeah, out and see what happens. Either of us have any surprises in store? I don't think we're in any kind of shape to do right. anything about so it. Right. So I think so. You're thinking that okay, McCready, you, you hope that he's still human. Childs, yeah, he. 
he kind of, he lied. At one point, his clothes are different. He lied about something. So you think he's probably... Well, he disappeared, he, too. He, right. He, he wasn't with them. You think he's infected. So he gives him a drink of, he gives, he gives him a drink of the booze. And you're like, why would he do that? Because because then you could transfer infections that way. Yeah. Somebody said that, and he assumed that this is the, the, the theory that a lot of people believe, he had gasoline in there. He had gasoline in there. So imagine you give a bottle of booze to gasoline to, to the thing, and he sees you drink it, and he, you, know, you make a little face. So he doesn't know how to react, because he, he doesn't know what booze yeah, he's is. Not, yeah. So he drinks it, and, and if Childs doesn't say, asshole, you gave me gasoline to drink? If he doesn't say that, he is the alien. Wow. So that was the awesome test, and another brilliant test that I never would have thought of. But didn't of. McCready take a swig of it? Yeah, but he just like held it back because he wanted, that was the perfect test but for what's, him. What's the, what's the evidence for that? that, that theory? There is none. That's, it's just a theory. That's, it's a, it's that's a, speculation. That's, 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 yeah, that, that's speculation. But, not, some, but some things aren't speculation, like the fact that McCready was human, because um, Carpenter wrote a scene where he, where he gets rescued and he gets tested and his blood is good. So, I th so based on stuff like that, you could say that McCready probably wasn't. Oh no, we were following McCready through the right. movie. He's basically yeah. the star of the movie. Even yeah, but at the very end, you don't you don't know. He could have, you know, you. you, you well, you, don't you know. do, you do, and I'll tell you why you know. Because there was a human moment where he's sitting there, basically waiting, waiting to freeze to death. You know, he's talking very human. You know, he's acting human. He had, he was alone, and you could see his humanity in that moment alone. I mean, you know, it's it would have been bad filmmaking. Why would they show an alien sitting there having a drink at the end? Just, it doesn't make any sense. We needed to be him, you right, know, as yeah. the audience were him sitting in that super right. hot thing that's about to become frigid. You know, and, he, and just waiting to die. That's why that scene is powerful. And then when Childs comes in, it it the intrigue of the entire movie comes right back. You know, it's not over. There's another guy there, and we don't know what his deal is anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, the whole scene doesn't work if they're both of them, or if it's flipped and Childs is the is the human and McCready's mm -hmm. the alien. It doesn't work. Um, so a couple of other things I wanted to mention. We have to talk about the special effects. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, you got all right. Rob Bottin. Yeah, he. This, all practical effects. All practical CG was not even a thing in in eighty yeah. one. Well, not in eighty one when they. Oh, it was ridiculous. It was you know you really didn't see it at, at that point. He worked himself really to the to only. the absolute bone. Like he actually had a he was he hospitalized. Was hospitalized because overworked. he overworked. He, Stan Winston did the Stan dog. Stan Winston did the dog scene. The dog scene. Because, but Rob and his crew did did everything else. Yeah. And he's all practical, all amazing effects. Now you know. That you, do you ever think of why like when the head detaches and drips down to the uh, to the floor? You know the sinew and the colors were not human, right? I mean, yeah. this, mm -hmm. this is clearly not not. Right. They did that to to, get, to only get an R, not and not and not get an like a, what was that rating? N R or what was the uh, the X but not an X? N R not rated? No, not, no, no, no. It's N C seventeen or N C seventeen. Did yeah. that exist back then? Yeah, That's yeah. Right I'm pretty sure. But if, if that was very very realistic, they, it would have got N C seventeen. It made it better. But, it's but better. Than I it liked wasn't. it. I liked the, the the weird alien insides, yeah. even though you the know outside, what happened to that. So in that scene. So they, they load up the, the dummy head and the torso with all the goop and they were, you know, they're using chemicals and stuff. Like yeah. They didn't have the stuff that people have today. Like, the, you know, you can't go down and buy a bucket of green stuff back then in the 80s. Like, you had to use, like, chemicals. Yeah. <laughs> they load it up and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and the thing's just sitting there stewing and it's like, you know, a freaking chemistry experiment. So then they shoot the scene and they have like the flame bar that, you know, they use like this bar, like a propane mm -hmm. thing that, sh that gives you flames. So you can have it behind the, the lens yeah. of the camera so you get that reflection. And it's just a light, really, yeah, light it's, it's a real practical way to have fire, feel like there's fire in the room when they're shooting it. Yeah. And the thing exploded. <laughs> they pulled the routine and it exploded. Everyone got like the comical blackface. That's what, that's what Rob said <laughs> when they did it. <laughs> they had to rebuild explosion. the whole thing again. Oh my God. Yeah. And the other cool thing is that uh, the studio Somebody should have tested that. The studio was cold enough for you to see your breath. So they were, they were shooting that film basically cold all the time. The breath mm -hmm. is real. Yeah. They, were in yeah, a, yeah. they were in a refrigerated studio. Holy Christ, that's a big deal. Like you're f shooting a movie and you're like cold wearing wow, all warm day. clothes all, most of the time. And a lot of the scenes, a lot of it, you'd be amazed yeah, yeah, that yeah. much. Um, so the special effects, the things that they pulled off, first of all, how can they possibly still be good today, but they are. They still they are. work. They hold up. It totally holds Nothing up. Nothing has turned the hokey corner at all for yeah. me. I still look at it. Yeah, I, I watch the movie every few years. Yeah. It 100% holds up yep. in every way. Yeah, it's not dated, which, you know, 
you know, you watch some movies it's from the eighties, and I've watched all my favorite movies from the eighties again. Like when my when I had my daughters, you guys have had this experience too. You watch all your favorite movies with your kids, yeah. And it's interesting to see which ones hold up and which ones don't. And w what's interesting is the movies that are really high quality that turn into classics. They're not dated. They don't feel like an eighties movie. Yeah. It's just a good movie. Whereas other movies that turn where that didn't hold up. It feels like an 80s movie, yeah. you know, yep. and whatever that means. But it's like all the cliches and the typical stuff and the wardrobe and the hairstyles and everything. Yeah. Like it's t everything dates it because it's just unoriginal and it's not uh, not artistic and clever. And timeless. Yeah, it's not timeless. Yeah, so and this th movie these is These good timeless. movies step out of time They in step a sense. out of time, they, they, absolutely. They do become timeless. I totally agree. So, but not just that, though. It's inevitable in a way that I, th I don't think you can easily predict the pacing. Sometimes mm -hmm. the, the pacing is fine, but other times, like E.T., it's like the pacing is horrible. Yeah. And I, it's just That's so weird. But yeah, that did to the editing, but it's not nothing that I, you could have predicted. I don't think you know. And going back, like going back, it's not like I'm gonna go see this movie now. I wonder if the pacing is. I think the pacing is gonna be really horrible. You gotta like live it again. And, sure. And yeah. like, oh my god, this stinks. I can't sit through this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like there's something about the pacing in E.T. Like we've we've talked about this many times. Like something was wrong you know like something mm -hmm. actually was done wrong like if they if the it probably is the editor even though of course the it's way the that it's the director and the editor yeah. it is the bulk cuz then the yeah. so the director has you know final creative control over everything but they but they but, do work now that and, was spielberg and rely yeah. upon yeah but it's more yeah. than that guys remember this movie took the world by a storm this yeah. was a fun, a cultural phenomenon e. nobody e. About, e. Yeah. nobody was talking about pacing back then it's just something that over time affects some movies and, sure. and not the end yeah the i know other. it's really it's almost like a black hole some things get sucked in and some don't we, you know right. it, maybe it's hard I, mean, I think there's you know movies that have artistic vision have a great director are timeless. They like, work. Like you know, Jaws, like, like, like yeah. Spielberg did Jaws. Jaws's pacing is, is magnificent. It's wonderful. I haven't seen yeah. that in so long. And here's Alien, 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 Aliens. Now, there's a, there's, you know, a, which is, there's a parallel between yeah. all three of these movies, by the way. And The Thing and Aliens and Jaws are all monster movies. Yeah. You know, horror monster movies or whatever. The one beautiful thing about them is you don't see the monster a lot in all three of those movies. Yeah. You don't get inundated with the monsters. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to, and that Jaws was an accident. Jaws, the shark didn't work. The shark was going to be in the movie like three times more than it was. And they, they had to rewrite. Yeah, they had to rewrite the script every day. Every poor, time the shark broke, Bruce. They, had to, they had to rework the scripts. It was a big deal. Mm -hmm. but, but it worked. But it worked. Not only did it work, it, 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 it created the first blockbuster yeah. movie the of, of all time. First summer blockbuster of all time. But, the, but the, 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 I think a, a good modern movie which sort of got back to that tradition was Cloverfield, mm -hmm. where, you know, like the big. Yeah. Um, alien is in New York City where you don't see it very much yeah. and that is scarier yep. you know getting the glimpse of like oh what was that you know is actually what your imagination is much more scary than just overwhelming you with you know really good close-ups all the time well, well also I like being overwhelmed but, <laughs> but there's another thing too that the, there's a mechanic there where the time that you're not in front of the monster you know that's the that's the pinnacle of tension, and oh my yeah. God, I'm fighting the monster. I'm in front of the monster, but when you're not doing it, it's a, it's a then it's a build up again. Mm -hmm. It's like you need the build up monster encounter. It goes back down, talking action, build up, build up tension, blig up monster again, you know, and it goes back down. That's I mean, it worked beautifully in Jaws, you know, and in Jaws you got you got to see a little bit more every time. You got yeah. to see a little bit more. Now in the thing, you see this thing going for it the moment you see it, but mm -hmm. then the cool thing is that. It, it does its thing with the dog, then it's doing stuff behind the scenes, right. and then you just see little evidences of it, like, oh, you know, you see blood dripping right. and stuff like that. I, I just figured... It was great, because the movie had this constant tension that would occasionally, occasionally spike with a monster, spike and blow yeah. through the surface, but you knew it was there all the time. And, and meanwhile, you're trying to figure out what's going on. You're thinking, oh, what would I do in that situation? What should they do? I don't know. And they're trying to figure it out. Yep. And they're coming up with, like, they're like one step ahead of you. And it didn't matter. Nothing they did matter. Nothing mattered. worked. You, you think about it. From the moment that dog went into their camp, they're all dead. They were done. They're all dead, you know? Now, juxtapose this to the prequel movie that came, yeah. you know, a decade and a half later. I, or even longer. I didn't like the, the prequel movie at I all. I didn't like it either. What? It was it was meh. It's a total. I think I saw it just the one time in the theater. I never went bothered to go back and watch it again. There's a couple of interesting ideas in there. You know, they, like they they figured out that you could see who's real by their fillings. I don't like that if idea. You, why? If you, you I can't, like that a you lot. You can't replicate the fillings. If you have fillings, you're not a creature. If you don't have fillings, you could go either it's way. A, you could just it, say I've never had it's any. It's too cabinets. on the nose. Like good dental hygiene, you know, or yeah. you're. Uh, um, 
the monster. Other than that, yeah, the characters didn't. They didn't no. have the. They didn't yeah. have the character. You know, look, the, the tension wasn't there. The there pacing was, wasn't there. The pacing was was definitely not not, yeah. not in league. But it be, it's more because everything else wasn't there. Like yeah. pacing to what? Like you know, you just didn't. I didn't really care about the characters. The monsters were all digital. You know, they had practical um, enhanced by digital. Yeah. Yes. They shot that, and, and it, it just didn't work. It didn't well, feel right. Yeah, but to be for me though, I I saw it. I wasn't wowed by the characters. It was ne nowhere near the the original. But um, but I some of the some of the creature effects though I liked I saw behind the scenes mm -hmm. and what they made I saw what they made that was practical and then how they enhanced it yeah. and sure and this is going back a ways the, the the CG wasn't great it was a little shiny a little too shiny and, and a little bit fake but some of it was very creative and, and well pulled off I think it, sure a little some bit of more of attention to detail it, I mean this was like fantastic these were effects that you cannot do practically yeah. it's like not not even mm -hmm. really possible so I found it interesting from a from a, a, a visual effects enthusiast point of view, but it could have it could have been better. It didn't, right? it, but it, did, it wasn't good enough to be in the brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it wasn't it wasn't at that level. I don't know. You know, it's like trying to recreate a, an amazing movie. You, Ninety nine percent of the time, yeah. they fail. You know, it just it, it's not yeah. gonna work. Yeah, no, we're spoiled because you know it's like we're we appreciate a certain art form where we're watching the best of the best. Yeah. You know. Uh, all the time because those are the those are the the great classic you know blockbuster movies. We also see a lot of crap movies too. Yep. But we, the bar is set extremely high because there's just so many things out there, and there are you know artists spending millions and now tens and hundreds of millions of dollars on their craft. The science has you know of filmmaking has improved, and so I do think yeah we have these we're sitting now with these incredibly high standards. But it's a, it's amazing though that a movie from 1982 that was fairly low budget by modern standards with all practical effects, it you know 100% satisfying. Absolutely, John John Carpenter by yeah. far like you know, you know hit it out of the park. And it just it, shows you that that artistic layer is more important than anything else. That's right. That's what that's it, what matters. Man, it's that script writing. The script was so solid. It was such a knock you out of the park script. Yeah. Um, but he had the ability to pull together the right people and do all yeah. the stuff that a producer and a director need to do to make it happen. And you know, I would love if I ever ran into him at a convention or whatever. I would love to just tell him, "Hey, the man, fanboy him. you you just you, yeah, you're still impressed? Yeah, <laughs> you still I, I got felt, me." I felt bad for him because it, the, the reviews really shocked him. He was really surprised at the at the, the intensity of, of the reviews. But he, but he but, did get the last laugh. But he got, mean, yes, because there's been enough time now where we could say he, he knows, was ahead of his time. He it knows is it, a classic. Absolutely. It knows it's a cult yeah. classic, and who doesn't want to? have a cult classic yeah, in, yeah, in, their, yeah. in, in their resume. So this review He's that we many. just that we just did is the, this is the best what movie then? What is it? Well, I think it's a great example of a classic science fiction horror movie that holds up over time, yeah. um, that did everything right. It should, it still like is a, can be held up as a standard, you know, for other movies to aspire to. And a little bit of a lost art in that, you know, yeah. you will never see that, you that never amount see of practical, practical effects, effects I know. We may never see again, that again. Maybe. That's true. Guys, thanks. I'm really happy that you yeah. let me review my, one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. all-time movies. No, it's, it's in my top five that. movies, without a doubt. so much. Let us know what other classic science fiction or fantasy movies you would like us to review. We'll do a deep dive on them as well. Uh, and support us on Patreon. Check us out at alphaquadrant on the number six.com, just like it says up there on our console. And what else? I just want to say... Uh, if I were the thing, I wouldn't kill you guys. Thing? Well, you can't say that. Why? Right. Because you would be the thing. It wouldn't be you. But what if I were the thing? <laughs> Don't you get it? No. I, what if I were actually the thing? I'd still well, appreciate you, you guys. You wouldn't, though. You well, would why wouldn't to, I, though? Why wouldn't I? You would I? want to kill us. I would kill the people that are behind the, the tech okay, table. Yeah, that's All true. Right. We can agree on that much. <laughs> or at least kill them first. Yeah. Let us watch. <laughs> yeah, Liz disagrees. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Until next time, this is Alpha Quadrant 6. Thank you.